Hey everyone, um, welcome back. My name is Leslie and I hope last week you had a lot of fun with your marker mono prints lesson. Um, this week we're, we are going to be focusing on watercolor resist techniques. So what that means is we're going to be using watercolor paint and um, crayons in the same piece of art. Now these two things, um, they naturally resist each other. Um, so that can create really interesting effects on your artwork. Um, so I'm excited to show you guys how to do that and what I think works really well. Um, today I want us to focus on kind of the therapeutic benefits of making art. Um, and not thinking too hard about what we're making, but kind of letting the process itself um, be really fun and, like, and enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I really think the process is really great in this lesson and hopefully you guys can kind of find some peace and some um, calmness to this activity. All right, so here are some examples of the watercolor resist technique. All right, before we get into the activity, um, let's take a look at what supplies you might need today. All right, so what you will need today, um, you will need some paper, doesn't matter what kind. Um, crayons, um, I have a few here. If you have more, that's great. Um, a pencil, like always, um, some watercolor paints and a brush, and a cup of water. Um, so if you don't have watercolor paint at home, that is okay. Um, I the first lesson I showed you guys was painting with coffee and you can definitely use coffee instead of watercolor paints or tea. Um, whatever you have at home works, okay? So, but for today I'm going to use watercolors. Um, the other thing I also am going to grab and you guys can kind of, after I say this, pause and maybe go grab some objects of your own. Um, I am pulling, I'm going to go search around my house for things I can trace. So um, I found this candle that has a nice hexagon shape that I want to trace. Um, I have tape, a circle that I want to trace. Um, I do have a ruler for straight lines. And then I just also found this tin container that's a square that I'm going to trace. So any interesting shapes that you think oh, maybe I want to trace. Um, they don't have to be anything specific, but um, just interesting shapes, um, different size shapes, um, anything you have around, grab it in case, all right? I'm just starting with a few objects though. All right, let's, um, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually start on, um, like the larger project at hand, um, I want you to go ahead and get a scrap piece of paper and grab your crayons. Just grab a whole bunch of different colors and then have your watercolors out as well. So I have my watercolors, my brush, my um, cup of water. So what we're working with today is combining watercolor on top of crayon. So we know that these resist. Um, just chemically they do not mix or combine. So what I want you to do is like, just do random stuff to test out this technique. Use some light colors, some dark colors. Um, just go a little crazy with it um, and try out different things so that you know how this is going to work when you get to the final project, all right? Um, so I just put down some random, marks and I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to get some blue happening here and I'm going to wash the blue on top of the yellow. So what is um, going to work with this assignment? Oh, I really love that actually. It's just the yellow stays so bright. Um, what's going to work with this assignment is contrast. So combining light and dark colors. So I just chose a blue, which was naturally kind of dark, um, and put it on top of yellow. 
See, if I do the blue on top of blue, you can, it definitely still stands out a little bit, but I don't think it's as interesting as the blue on top of yellow. All right. Um, I might try like a lime green on top of this kind of reddish orange. So that's nice as well. Personally, I like the light colored crayon with the dark colored um, paint. But it's up to you on what you like. Um, but I would try to get a little bit of contrast happening. So here is a great example of, um, I didn't press that hard with the colored pencil, I mean the uh, crayon. I just kind of went like that. What you really need to do is you need to press down hard and make sure it is, um, it's definitely there. See, when you, when you go into it with this, see that's where it really starts to take place, where this I didn't push down hard enough, okay? So again, I'm using a pretty dark color on top of red, which is, you know, it's kind of light to medium in value, okay? Um, so these two are my favorites, so I know I'm gonna use some light crayons in my design and then maybe some dark paints, okay? So take a few minutes and just experiment. Again, I'm just using scrap paper and I'm experimenting with different colors. Um, and different, um, I mean, different colored crayons and different colored paints, all right? Okay, so now that I've experimented a little bit, I'm now going to get into creating my design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some objects um, that I showed you earlier that I found around my house. Um, just things that I can trace. Honestly, it can be anything. It could be something that isn't a perfect shape. Like, it could be something very organic. Um, but I'm just gonna stick with, you know, this hexagon, this circle. I have this to make smaller circles. And I have a ruler. So, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm just going to start designing my page. And I'm just gonna trace um, this circle here. And I'm just going to do this kind of like with no plan in mind, all right? So the thing that I want you to think about though while designing is um, kind of spreading your design out around the page. So having some come off the page um, and having different sizes of things. So I have some big circles, but maybe I'm gonna trace um, some smaller ones. All right. I really like circles, so you could do like the same shape throughout the whole um, design if you want. All right. All right, so what I have just done is I've just traced my objects and I added some stripes in the background with the ruler. I'm not sure how well you can kind of see that. I know it's very light, um, but I have different sized circles, hexagons. Um, make sure that when you're doing this, you have some that kind of go off the page a little bit and you really wanna take up as much space as you can. Um, I decided to overlap some of my shapes when tracing. You don't have to, but I think that's a nice kind of technique. Um, but yeah, pretty much different size shapes, different shapes and overlap and going off the side of the page, okay? So the one thing that before you move on that you might wanna know, um, if you traced really hard with a pencil and it's really dark, I'd just probably go over it with an eraser lightly um, just so that it's not super dark because you don't want it to bleed through or show through the um, crayons. All right, for this next part, you are going to want to pick out um, the crayons you wanna use. So um, in my experiments, I realized that the lighter color crayons um, work really nicely with the kind of dark color um, 
watercolor paints. So I'm going to choose kind of some lighter colors. I like these kind of yellow and orange um, colors here. So what I'm going to now go ahead and do is I'm going to outline my shapes and I'm going to fill them in with different patterns and designs. So this is where um, you really can just kind of let loose and kind of do whatever you want here. Um, you already have your plan for a design. Now it's just kind of making it interesting. So um, one thing you need to remember to do is to press pretty hard with the, um, with the crayons. Um, if you are worried about not being able to go over your lines well, of course you can bring back your kind of stencil objects and trace them again. Um, I'm just gonna freehand, but um, do whatever is gonna work best for you. So I'm gonna go into this circle. And one thing you wanna um, think about is making your lines a little bit thicker than you would normally make them. Um, if you can see here, it's not just kind of I'm going over them once and then that's it. You want to go over them a few times and make them a little bit thicker, all right? Just so that you can definitely see them when you put the watercolor over them. All right, so now I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to trace this real quick, but I am going to now like go into my shapes and add some patterns in there. So you can do whatever you want. For patterns, it's, I mean, the world is yours. I like sticking with somewhat basic patterns and I honestly, in this circle, I might just do a bunch of little circles that are different um, sizes, okay? So, but still make sure that you're kind of pressing down and it's very solid but fill it up with an interesting pattern. Again, this is supposed to be very therapeutic. Don't stress yourself out. Do whatever you um, feel like doing. It, like I say in every video, nothing is perfect and there aren't really um, right answers in art, in my opinion. So one thing you might be worried about is where the um, shapes overlap and you can fill the with whatever you want. Sometimes people like to do like say if you have um, like this kind of like light yellowish orange and then this red you might want to do like a color that's somewhere in between there so kind of like a reddish a reddish orange because um, it's like oh they're overlapping maybe they're a little transparent. Um, I, I'm just gonna leave it blank. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to thicken this line up. Okay, so I've colored my design. Um, I did press pretty hard on um, all of these areas. So just make sure you're doing that or going over it a few times. Um, so I have my design and before we put watercolor on it, I do have this broken crayon. Um, sometimes it's interesting to use um, the sides of your crayon, um, like with the ones that, I mean, don't break your crayon if it's in perfect condi condition, um, but if you have like a little piece of it, it might be interesting to kind of use the side of it and color spaces in. Now, like you saw in the demo, this will not um, like show up very well. Like I kind of did lightly coloring um, with red on this example, but you can't really see it. So don't think that this is going to really show up super well, but I just kind of want to play around with it. I think it might give it um, more of a texture. For the background. So with the stripes I made in the background, you can really like do whatever you want with them. Um, you can do more patterns. Like the patterns are I think the most um, kind of therapeutic and relaxing thing about this because you're just kind of, you get into the zone and you just kind of do it. 
Um, so I like kind of making all these. I did very kind of minimal patterns in these, um, but you can go like crazy, like make the whole thing zentangles if you want. And again, like I, like I probably have already said, make it your own, do whatever you want with it. If you, if like this is not your thing and you just want to do stripes or like crazy patterns with the ruler, just doing like, like random lines everywhere, um, or something like that, you know, go for it. If you do want to draw representationally or, um, you know, drawing actual objects or things that you see, um, you can do that as well. Um, but my approach is just kind of tracing random patterns and kind of just enjoying the whole process. Okay. So I have everything colored in that I want to. Um, so get your watercolor, um, get your watercolor paints out and we will go on to that step. All right, so I got my placemat out just in case. I have my water, it's already a little bit green, um, and I have my watercolors. So I know that I want like a darker color to go with this because it's so light. Um, so I'm probably gonna use you know some of those darker blues or maybe a little bit of black or brown. Um, but this part is really up to you, whatever you think is gonna look best. Um, I, I have two ways of kind of doing this. I either kind of just randomly paint the whole thing and I really enjoy that process because it's just, you're painting what you feel um, and you don't really have a plan and I, I like that approach better. Um, you can also though plan out, maybe you want certain circles to be different colors. Go for it. I actually might end up doing that um, or certain stripes to be different colors. Okay, so I'm going to get my paints wet. We're running out of this blue a little bit. So I think in the background, I'm probably going to do a mix of blue and black. So I'm just gonna put those on my palette so they're, they're ready to go. Um, I'm going to probably actually go into each of those and paint them a certain color. But right now, I'm just gonna kind of wash over this. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. See how it's resisting here? So that's why you really want to, and you can kind of wipe a little bit of it off. That's why you really wanna press down hard with your colored pencils, um, I mean your crayons, just because if you don't, then it will just kind of, it won't resist. But see, I can just go over that and the yellow is still staying. Okay, so I'm kind of making this a little bit dark, um, which is perfectly fine. That's kind of the look I want, but you don't have to. All right, now I'm gonna do in the actual shapes and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean out my palette just with a napkin. I'm just going to get my blues in there. Now I'm gonna go, ooh, this is where it really gets interesting. I just love that the bright colors stay um, when you paint over them. It's like you, you just don't kind of expect that. And I think this blue is really working on top of the red. Yeah, that's nice. So you are going to have like those little kind of spots that kind of just sit on top of the um, on top of the crayon, but that's okay. You can either just blot them with a um, paper towel or you can um, 
just kind of let them dry and see how that looks. All right, um, so I have my bright blue in place and now I'm looking at the whole thing and I'm, I'm thinking I kind of don't really love the gray background that I did. I, I was kind of picturing it different. So I'm gonna go in and just add a little bit of blue to some of those areas and kind of just make it a little bit more cohesive with the rest of this design. So you can always add layers. Um, sometimes it's easier if you let them dry, but this is still pretty wet, so I'm just gonna keep going back into it. And if you'll notice, like this, like, this crayon, this color just seems so um, bright, even though it really isn't that bright in person. All right, so I have a couple areas that have like really like um, strong color that didn't resist that much on top of the crayon and you can just blot that off if you want or you can let it dry like I said. Um, either works. All right, so here's our final product. Um, still a little bit wet, that's why I'm holding it carefully. Um, it's I think it turned out really fun. Um, I like the contrast of just the, you know, the warmer colors with the cooler colors. Um, and that's what you really kind of want to aim for. Um, but yeah, that's how it turned out. All right, you guys, that is it for today. Um, hopefully you had fun experimenting with this watercolor resist technique. Um, and hopefully you can find some time this week to make a design like I showed you. Um, again, you're just using household objects that you want to trace um, and make kind of your own abstract design. Um, so hopefully you find this process really um, enjoyable and relaxing and you just kind of go with the flow. Um, that's kind of what this week is all about. So um, have fun with this project and thank you for taking this class.